Welcome to this UniLogic tutorial. UniLogic is the complete application development environment for our Unitronics Unistream control platform. Hello, my name is Cara Barrick Levy, and I'm a technical documentation specialist here at Unitronics. Today's tutorial is about structs. Structs give great control to the programmer. A struct is a container of operands. The operands may be of different data types. In this tutorial, we will look at the different types of structs. There are user-defined structs, timer structs, automatically created structs, and system structs. Then we will create a struct and declare it in the application. Let's begin with system structs. These are organized in the tag window at the bottom of the UniLogic screen. System structs contain tags that are provided by the UniStream system. Let's take a look at the general struct. Here, for example, you can see the ladder initial cycle bit. Okay, handy for power up tasks, as well as always off and always on. Let's take a quick look at frequency. Here you can see an oscillating bit for 100 million for one second. Next, let's take a look at automatically created structs. These are created by UniLogic when you add elements to your application, as for example during hardware configuration. Okay, now you can see that we're going to click on IOs at the bottom of the screen, and we will see the COM modules that have been added to this application. And now we're going to take a look at one of the IO modules. Okay, here you can see you've got status, you have the input values, you have status for each channel, we drill down, you can see that each input, in fact, has uh, its own separate uh, data tags. You can assign aliases to these for ease in addressing later on. Now let's take a look at the communication structs. See what happens when we add a modem to the program. Okay, here's our struct. Let's drill down. And here you can see everything that you need to use a modem in your application, success, fail, status, you scroll down a bit, all of the elements that you need for GPRS. Next, let's take a look at some of the communication structs for protocols. Okay, let's take a look at can open. I'm going to add a node. And now click over to globals to see the structs. First, let's take a look at the can open general struct. You've got status, ID, number of nodes, everything you need. Back over to globals to take a look at a specific function. Let's look at NMT. Okay, there you go. Status, received bit. Okay, time to have a look at Modbus. Let's uh, add a Modbus slave. And let's have a look at the struct. Session success, port, slave ID, it's all there. Function structs are particularly useful. I'd like to show you what happens when we add a PID function to the application. I'm going to type PID into the toolbox. Add a function. Click on the little pencil over there. Okay, now look. All right, the only type that's available is the PID vision configuration. Now we're going to name that tag. Okay, Evan1. And save it. Okay, now look at this struct. Yeah, let's take a look at that oven. Okay, you've got your set point, your process value, proportional band, integral, derivative. Scroll down, let's have a look, reverse action bit. All you need. The same paradigm is applied when we add a timer to the program. T1. I'd like to assign a preset value. I can adapt the format if I desire. 
save, and uh, there we go, another struct. You can see the preset time that I assigned. Okay, you've got current value and you have your timer bit. Finally, I'd like to take a look at the user-defined structs. These are very powerful. You define them and then you reuse them in your program as you require. Uh, note that each instance may contain different power values. User-defined structs are organized at the tab in the bottom of the tag window. We're going to add a struct. Name it. And now add members. As I said, each member can be assigned a different data type. Let's add another. And now you can see how simple it is to add an array to, uh, to a user-defined struct. Before you can use the struct in your program, you have to declare it. Okay, so we're going to add a tag. And now we're going to scroll down. You can see that the user-defined structs are at the very bottom. In order to identify the members of the struct for that particular function, you'll need to assign alias names. Okay, so this is father, and I'm going to assign him the alias name Simpson. Now let's uh, do the same for one of the children within the array. Okay, here we have Bart. Now let's use them in the program. I'd like to pull up a simple operation. Okay, let's use greater than. And this is how we address using the struct members. Okay, there's Bart. And there's Homer. And that's all there is to it. This concludes this tutorial about structs. You can find more information and sample applications on our website. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and we hope to see you again.